Now, we were in the field yesterday talking about the Pomona Natural Bridge, and we were there in the field. So, once we're done with all our field work in that area, we come to the topographic map, which shows elevation contours on a 20-foot contour interval. And my finger right here is pointing to the Pomona Natural Bridge on the topographic map. What we need to do is locate ourselves on this map so that we can take the notes and the observations we made yesterday and put them on the map here. This, this ravine that we were looking down was right here. We noted that the stream was going about 10 degrees west of north, so that was up at the top of the ravine where it's trending just slightly west of north. So right where that star is, is where we're going to put our first note from yesterday. Here is note one and two, corresponding with the two notes in my field book. This is the work map. Now I have approximately 180 notes in this area. So one through 80 describe different points in this quadrangle that we have visited and taken notes on. Once we get all those notes together, we are able to create a map based on all these points, so it's sort of like connect the dots. We, where we see limestone and limestone, we connect the dots there. Where we see sandstone and sandstone, we connect the dots there. Now that we've got all our notes down on the map, it's time to create the real map. Now this is the work map of the Pomona Quadrangle with the different rock formations with different colors. And as you can see where my pencil is, again, that's the natural bridge. That's note number one that I was talking about before. You can see it's colored green with a colored pencil. That denotes the Pennsylvanian Age Caseyville Formation, which is a sandstone with uh, coarse-grained quartz pebbles in some places, cross-bedded, and it has ripple marks. In this area, what's colored green is the Caseyville Formation. What's colored pink? is the Mississippian Age Kincaid Formation, which is a limestone. What's colored, sort of an olive green color, it's sort of hard to tell on this map, is the Mississippian Dagonia Formation, which is a fine-grained sandstone. What happens is each note just gives us an idea of what's in the area and the distribution of those rocks. We can see we have lots of exposures in the areas that the map is very detailed, like this. We have tight, very tight contour lines and solid contacts between the formations, which is a solid line, that means we know exactly that the contact lies right there in that spot um, at that location. Where we draw a solid line, that's where we have seen the contact in the field, or we have a very good idea that it is exactly there by other observations we've made. A dotted line, like is right here, that denotes an inferred contact, so that's where we believe the contact between the Caseyville Formation and the Kincaid Formation lies uh, to very, very close. Here you can see the green, which is the Caseyville Formation, and above it we see a very thin polygon with, with dots in the middle. That is the Grindstaff member of the Tradewater Formation, and above it we have a polygon with small circles in it, and that is the Murray Bluff member of the Tradewater Formation. Uh, what I have here is something that I've observed in the field, that this bluff that I've um, encircled is quartz aronite, and it has a lithology that is described in the column that comes in the next page of the map. Above it is a sandstone bluff that is just of a slightly different lithology. We've traced that out in the field. Now, where we don't see where I haven't put these these dotted members of the Tradewater Formation, we're not sure that they exist there. So where the map is very detailed, it means that I got a great note, and where it's not very detailed, it means that that area was hard to get to, or we weren't able to cover that area, and we're, we're more unsure of what's what's going on geologically there. A to A prime is how we is how we denote the line of cross-section. So what we want to do on a geologic map is show the map view, a geological view that you would get if you're flying in a helicopter over this area. From that, we draw a cross-section, which is where we take a razor blade and we slice down this line, A to A prime, down to a certain depth, maybe um, 2,000 feet. We look in at it from the side and show what's going on there. So the reason I drew this line of cross-section 
where I did is that it crosses a fault here. So uh, oftentimes we draw cross sections along the most complex geological areas so that we can describe what's happening in the subsurface. So actually that's what the cross section is, to make it easier for the map reader to understand what's happening on the map. This is the Pomona Fault, and as you can see it curves off to the west and it comes down to the south, the southeast, and then we lose it. We're not sure uh, where it goes there. It doesn't seem to line up with this other fault here, and we get another fault to the side. That's called an N echelon form uh, style of faulting, where you get some shearing, some strike slip movement, and some dip slip movement, so some up down, some side to side movement along that fault, and you get an N echelon pattern of faulting because the stresses on that on those rocks when they were faulted was more complex. I have my pencil here on the natural bridge and as you can see that's less than a half mile away from the Pomona Fault. So the joints that we get near the Pomona Natural Bridge could very well be closely related to the Pomona Fault and so the orientation of the joints are taken into consideration when drawing the fault. Joints are caused by stresses in the rock and faults are caused by stresses in the rock it's very important to look at the jointing you have in the area near the faults so that you can determine what the structural geology is in the area. This is the product, the finished work map, that I turn into our cartographer who digitizes these lines and puts it on GIS, links it up with longitude latitude, and um, is able to document these and makes it easier to print when it's in a digital form. But this is the work map that I've created and as you can see in the upper portion, it looks blank, but really what that is, is that's uh, one formation. I just didn't want to waste colored pencil. So this is the upper trade water formation. It's uh, pretty boring up in the northern half, and it's pretty interesting in the southern half. So, And there are very few exposures in the northern half because that part was glaciated. The southern half was not glaciated. So actually, we're looking at the glacial boundary through the middle of the map about right here. After the cartographer has had the work map for about a month, she draws the lines and she creates polygons of the geologic formations. So these are just shapes with colors inside them and she overlays that on top of the topographic map and it becomes the geologic map with the topographic base map underneath. So what you can do is you can take this map out in the field and you can see the Pomona Natural Bridge and you can see that that's the Pennsylvania Caseyville formation. You can see that the Pomona Fault is not very far away. So everything's the same, um, almost everything's the same between the work map and the finished product, except that I've made a couple changes. I decided that I didn't like the cross section where it was, so I decided to do a longer cross section from A to A prime, and I went through the Pomona Fault still, and I got to show a lot more geology. So. Um, that was turned out to be a much better place to draw the cross section than where I had it before, which was right right here between my fingers. This area on the map, up by the title, it shows who has done the work on the map. I get to put my name on it, and John Nelson helped me out, and so did Joe Devera, and we made the map in 2007. So that's that's the part that makes me the most proud is that I get to put my name on this map, and people get to ask me questions about it.